Japanese explorer Shirazi Nobu sailed into Sydney in autumn 1911 to wait out the winter before re-attempting an expedition to Antarctica. The Sydney press soon ran stories that suggested the Japanese party were on a spying mission, and Australian Museum trustee Professor Edgeworth David defended Shirazi's group and sought to help them. In spring that year, as the Japanese prepared to depart again for Antarctica, Shirazi expressed his gratitude to Edgeworth David by giving him his own sword. 68 years later, the professor's daughter, Mary Edgeworth David, presented the piece to the Australian Museum. Welcome to the Australian Museum. My name is Frank Howard. I'm director of this wonderful museum, and it's a great pleasure to welcome our uh, Japanese and local guests here today. Lieutenant Shirase's amazing sword which was presented to this museum, has travelled to Japan in 1979 and 1998, and we're very pleased to see it go back to visit Japan again, particularly in a year that has seen so much hardship in northern Japan. I'm very pleased to um, uh, welcome this sword um, back to Japan for the third time in the year that's actually celebrating the 100th anniversary of Lieutenant uh, Shirase's uh, Antarctic expedition. So here we have the oh, Shirase sword, which oh, is signed <laughs> Mitsu Kami Kaniyasu. Uh, what's interesting about this sword is that it's signed in a um, mirror image so that his signature reads correctly in a mirror. And it's a very nice sword. I'm about to um, oil it. Now you only handle the sword by the Nakago, which is this bit here. You never touch this part of the sword. Uh, fingerprints can rust very quickly when they take the sword because they're so highly polished. And it's just a matter of putting on the habaki. Suka. And you always dip the scabbard down slightly and just rest the end onto it, then slide it along it back edge of the blade, and there we have it, storage, bag, 